Nesta parte do Cultura Mundo, conheceremos o mestre Sakaki Bazukan e sua arte requintada. Vamos apreciar a escolha da madeira apropriada para o cozimento que resultará a fuligem. Esta deverá repousar no mínimo por seis meses e só adquirirá a sua plenitude 20 anos depois. Para um artista que trabalha com o sumi como bazucan, muito mais importante que a pretensão realista da aparência é captar a essência do objeto pintado. Agora, no Cultura Mundo. Fire. Capricious, ever-changing, dangerously beautiful. Fire is the origin of sumi. The ink from which sumi, Japanese ink painting, takes its name. The carbon particles released by the flame bond together, and from this material, sumi is formed. Sumi flows like fire, consuming, difficult to predict or control. The beauty and meaning of sumi is far from absolute, Rather, it lies somewhere in that infinite range between black and white. The Sumi artist often feels a connection to the earth, a grounded peace of mind in contrast to the restless energy of his medium. Such a man is Sakaki Bakuzan, a renowned contemporary Sumi artist. Bakuzan has lived in relative seclusion in the mountain village of Iga Ueno for the past 10 years, cultivating his art. Bakuzan revels in the unpredictability of Sumi. To him, it is not a force to be tamed, but a collaborator. He eschews caution and lets his brush absorb the Sumi freely. This is meant to be the Chinese character for soil, although it is far removed from its orthodox rendering. It's an excellent illustration of the closeness of calligraphy and painting. The absorption of the ink by the paper has a fascinating vitality and excitement of its own. The ink is already creating patterns within the different strokes. It takes several hours for the ink to dry completely. Even the artist cannot say with complete confidence whether his intentions will be realized in the final work. The drying, says Bakuzan, may be the most exciting part of the process. The final form is sometimes a disappointment, sometimes better than I dared hope, never the same. While I sleep, the sumi moves as though it has a will of its own, forming blots and shadows, accumulating in some places and withdrawing from others. A few days ago, it was impossible for me to get to sleep. I was in such suspense about the progress of one of my paintings. I got up about 2 a.m. to check it, then checked it again the moment I woke up. I'm truly a fortunate man. I have the most fascinating job in the world.
Sumir was invented in China perhaps as long as 3,000 years ago and first imported into Japan about the middle of the 7th century. Today, almost all sumi is made in Nara, Japan's ancient capital. The best time to make sumi is during the cold season, from October to March, when humidity is low and the ink can harden easily. This workshop has been in existence for 400 years, during which time the methods of production have remained unchanged. The quality of the ink is best assured by tradition. The base material of sumi is soot. Here, this is made by burning rapeseed oil below lids of unglazed biscuit ware. The carbon particles in the smoke are deposited on the underside of the lid. Rapeseed oil produces a very high quality sumi. The size of the flame is also important for quality. The smaller the flame, the finer the particles. One worker looks after the collection of soot from 200 bowls. He performs this operation every two hours. In one day, 1.2 kilos of soot is produced. That's enough for about 100 ink blocks. The soot is mixed with glue, which is made from the gelatine produced by boiling animal bones. When it cools, the glue will harden. When the mixture is still hot, it is elastic and can be kneaded. The worker uses the weight of his whole body to remove the air bubbles and assure a uniform consistency. Final kneading by hand. He has to shape it quickly before it becomes unmalleable. One worker can produce some 300 blocks of sumi a day. Sumi is dried for a minimum of six months. It would be easy to hang the sumi blocks with molten string, but no, here rice straw is preferred. Even in the production process, one can detect an aesthetic sensibility at work. Sumi has a lifespan not unlike that of a human being. Between 20 and 50 are the prime years, when colour and vigour are at their peak. When it reaches the age of 100, the glue no longer bonds properly, and its useful life is over.
Countless Sumi artists have devoted their lives to their art, creating techniques which have been passed down and refined from generation to generation. Here, Bakuzan slightly overlaps the first stroke with the second. As the original blot repels the second, a white trace is formed. Another technique, called Tarashi Komi, involves a mingling of weak grey and bold black sumi. The reaction of the sumi is immediate and dynamic. a work by the 17th century master Sotats makes use of the Tarashikomi technique. The ox appears to dance with vitality, muscles rippling. One can almost hear its bellowing affirmation of life. Peonies by Murakami Kagaku. We think of the joy of flowers largely in terms of their colours. Here, Kagaku has set himself the challenge of painting peonies in black and white. This masterpiece is a tour de force, successfully blending techniques such as blot, blur and terashikomi in a harmonious whole. Important as technique is, choice of materials is equally crucial to achieving the desired impression. Bakuzan uses more than 300 varieties of sumi, but they can be divided roughly into two types. Yu enboku, derived from oil soot, and sho enboku, made from pine tree soot. Each has its own distinctive character. The blocks themselves are beautiful artistic miniatures, and yet have an almost monumental presence. Iron Bar by the 18th century artist and priest Hakuin is an excellent example of the force and firmness that may be achieved with the use of UN Boku oil-based sumi. The indomitable strength of Hakuin's spirituality is manifest in this uncompromising work. The bar is a symbolic protector of Buddha and his teaching. Hakuin spent most of his 84 years as an itinerant evangelist. Notice how the twists of the bar are achieved by the overlapping of brush strokes and the use of dark shades. Globefish by the 19th century priest Sengai. What a contrast to Hakuin's iron bar. Here, the lighter, more buoyant wood based sho enboku helps impart an impression the very antithesis of solidity. Fish's buoyant body, lightly suspended in water, seems ready to slip out of sight any moment. <laughs> 